It's uh, very happy to come back to Sydney uh, because Beijing nowadays want to be the one of the best city for liberal city. So actually Beijing is come here with the Sydney, Melbourne, Vancouver, and Vienna. Why such kind of city is so good for people to come to live here? And uh, I come to try to understand the better, even though I think I came to Australia almost every year. Uh, but the, for me, Sydney is still an amazing city for me to, to have a look. So, but the, today's my homework is talk about our study, what we are doing right now. Actually, we are trying to make that happen. What's the low carbon? Actually, we start to talk, talk about carbon neutral by 2050. We are strongly pushing. This figure is, oh, sorry. This figure is, uh, we already did a lot of study, uh, I think, for the last uh, eight years which is focused on a two degree target globally uh, by 2100, what Chinese energy transition should like. Um, so we already sell this idea to our government, to NDRC, and we heavily work together with NEA, National Energy Administration, to put this figure there and uh, to say what happened in 2050. Because uh, EI, we belong to NDRC, so our fundamental homework is to have the government to make a five year plan. Right now is the timing to make our 14th five-year plan. We start from 2021 to 2025. But for us, 14th five-year plan is so crucial in China for economy, for energy transition. So if we really want to go, to, go ahead with the such kind of figure by 2050, where to work right now? Because the lifespan, even for coal fire power plant, is longer enough by 2050 still there. So if we want to see a very good future for China to do the two degree, everything we, we should really, really start right now to make it kind of happen. For example, whether coal already reached the peak, our answer is yes. And we want to limit all the new coal fire power plant, just stop, no more new coal fire power plant. And we are think, design what happened for that What's the future, for example, if there's un any unemployment, many people will lose their job, how to help them from the government budget? We are designing such kind of roadmap. So today I will go ahead with such a first picture like this way, whether China can do this or not. For me, my answer is 100% we do with that. The reason I come here, our, our modeling team look at the nuclear part. It's a, maybe the only one in China we have a very big nuclear future. Uh, we can't, we're just writing the Chinese IPC report. I'm in charge of the scenario. We compare all the scenarios in China. So far, in our figure, by 2050, we have nearly 400 gigawatt nuclear power plant in China. This is only for the two degree. Later, I'll come back to the 1.5 degree scenario. China will have 520 gigawatt nuclear power plant. So we are, right now, we are thinking about China's nuclear policy and whether we should do very big investment on the nuclear fusion technology today. For example, one to 300 billion US dollar in five years to put investment on that. We are writing a proposal to the government. Now China can put this, but we need a, a group, a team to work together. So I'm so happy to come here to talk to colleagues in Australia, whether we can be the same team to make really the f a nuclear future happen. For me, I'm not the one who prefer nuclear. I'm uh, doing energy system analysis. All the power generation, they have their negative things. Even for solar PV, for wind, we have a lot of uh, pictures there to show what's the extent in, in the wind farm, how many people died there. We had a figure there. And we also had a figure for nuclear. But for me, so far, nuclear power still the safest and also cleansed, one of the cleanest power generation in the world. So that's the reason I put there, but leave the colleague in China to have an argument or, or something like that. But uh, our today's target, the reason why China moved to, to work to the energy transition is mainly driven by the air quality policy. Start from 2013, China released a very strong policy package to push all the, we say, non-fossil fuel energy development. 
So driving by such kind of policy package in last five or eight years, China moved very, very fast. Everything changed. And uh, but so far, it's, uh, this figure show you the first three bar is about the, the air pollution in Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei. But I have, have to say is that by now, we really make very, very good progress, go much beyond the, 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 the target. For example, today in Beijing, we already almost have the same air quality in Shanghai. And uh, we also can go ahead with the, the national standard, uh, for example, 35 microgram uh, per cubic meter before 2030. Even the national target want to do that by 2030. But uh, with the effort, with energy transition, we can go to the target much earlier. Because today it's already go to 42 microgram uh, per cubic meter for the first half year of this year. So this is a good thing. But our trouble is uh, if we really want to go to WHO standard, like what happened in Sydney, which is a really headache from Beijing, if they want to comp compare with Sydney, the only very bad thing is air quality. They cannot compete with uh, Sydney's air quality here. So Beijing decide by 2050, they want to be the zero emission city. They all the internally decide, but how to do with that? The trouble is that the, the lower line is a WHO standard for <coughs> air quality, but it's almost infeasible for China because the background emission of PM2.5 related gases already make the air, uh, air pollution go to seven to eight microgram uh, per cubic meter. But we had to put something like uh, for agriculture emission, and uh, so 10 microgram uh, per cubic meter is uh, almost impossible for China. But we can do something like 15. This is uh, one of the target in, in uh, WH WHO. And also China is working very hard to make an SDG happen. So this is also one of the driving force. We want to improve the air quality and also in, in make energy transition changing in China because any transition or uh, climate change mitigation can really help the SDG to be implemented by 2030. So China's government proposed before 2030, China will reach all the SDGs. We are so uh, we try to look what happened for that one and pick up of some of that. Then today, our target is uh, next year, China will propose middle century strategy to UFCCC for climate change target. Um, even though there are some uh, traditional study, for example, China will peak CO2 emission on 2030, but our purpose is that China will peak much earlier, for example, next year or 2022, is a peaking of CO2 emission in China and start to decrease rapidly. So this is our purpose. Is, uh, we did a two degree target and we also have a 1.5 degree uh, scenario, which is uh, by 2050, China should be nearly carbon neutral. So we finished a study and we want to put this, uh, the proposal into the national middle century strategy, the official proposal to, proposal to the UNFCCC. Uh, but what kind of uh, policy we should go ahead with that? First one, China need a very strong commitment for the, the target. It's, uh, but unfortunately, before land, end of last year, China never said China can do or will do two degree target. Even though we, we are a member of the Paris Agreement, but the first time in uh, last November, the senior official Pre Minister Xie Zhenhua announced China will do two degree. But impossible to for one profit degree, which is uh, just after one month after the uh, IPCC special report on 1.5 degree warming. Uh, but within last uh, eight months, seems Mr. Xi Jinping's idea also changing. Now he told us, yes, China can think about 1.5 degree target because we keep talking with him. What's the, the feasible, feasibility, China's energy transition, and what's a good thing for China by leading the technology inside the 1.5 degree target. So this is one way we make a the very strong commitment anyway. This is a very good signal to changing the economic activities. And we are, the second one is we are trying to design some, we say no loser policy because China's coal industry is very big. If they go to very small part of that, 
so far we still have 3.5 million people working on the coal mining. If they lose their job, what to do? How to help them? Even though the renewable energy can increase employment, they get more people to, working on the, uh, to work on the uh, renewable energy power plant. But the trouble is uh, all the job, all the, all the workers in the solar PV or wind power generation, they have basically they have for university degree. But coal miner in China is uh, very low educated people. So you cannot match these two. So we have to think about some policy to support them. And also the, today, we already have very strong policy. For example, subsidy for wind, for solar PV, for electric car in China is the highest in the world. Even today, you have near, get nearly uh, 10,000 US dollar subsidy for one electric car in Beijing, which is very high. And also, this, this could be a very good basis for China to go ahead with that. And also, next one is the technology. It's amazing progress right now in China. And later, I will come to talk about with that. So that's a basically, so far, which in China, we don't have very strong target. This is a big trouble for us. So we push the government to make a very strong commitment for 2 degree and 1.5 degree target in, in the future. The no loser policy, with what we are doing, we think about how to help the government to deal with the coal industry. For example, now they will give subsidy for solar and wind. In the coming future, we'll give subsidy for coal fire power plant to help them to quit. We calculate how much subsidy uh, based on the lifespan of all the coal fire power plant by 2050, how much subsidy we should pay to them in order to, to help them to reduce our, their, their how say, the hours uh, for, for power generation. To be to help to do the picking load uh, design and also help the people who lose their job. Maybe we pay something like 200,000 yuan for per worker and help them to educate uh, them to get a new job in uh, three or four years. We don't make their life worse. So this is some policy we are, we are doing right now. And also restaurant policy today can help the future policy making process. We already have highest subsidy for solar PV. We also have highest subsidy for electric car, even though the subsidy is decreasing a lot now. But historically, we have the appearance for that one. So this could be the basis in the coming future. That means that maybe the new policy need not be stronger than before. So this is a good way for a government official to think about that. And also, for two, uh, two degree and 1.5 degree target in China, what we should do is uh, we should clearly have the target for that. Because so far, the industry people, they don't know what to do. But there's a very clear target for two and 1.5 degree will help the industry people or investors to make their decision. And also in the meantime, you already, already announced there will be carbon neutral by 2050 for all the greenhouse gases. That means by 2040, in EU, will be the CO2 neutral. But if EU can do that, of course, China also can do the same thing. We can work together to change the world, just like I come here. If you, you Australia want to do the nuclear, it's a very good signal for China to think about this. We can bring the idea. And also, their emission is feasible for us to think about that. So finally, we want to go to the target together with the world for the two degree and the 1.5 degree. That's been the blue one and the green one. We don't think about even higher temperature increase. This is a, the worst case for us. This is not our people to select our target. And uh, so far, China is doing good. Look at the second, uh, uh, the lower, uh, the Chinese one. The CO2 emission is getting to be a flat. It's not like before, go like this way. Now it's a changing. And also for energy system, you know, like a coal, for us, it's almost a peak. And there was our effort is for the next five years, make sure the coal go like this way. And again, come back to the energy transition. If we, we can go like this way, there's a, not a very big change for coal industry. Actually, we calculate how many people lose their job, how, many, how much money government should pay for them to do like this. And in the meantime, the power generation Look at the nuclear part; it's getting to be very big, and of course we also have solar PV and and uh, also 
wind to go ahead with that, but we make the coal fire power plant decreasing based on, we need not to close the coal fire power plant earlier, just uh, closing them, but they reach the lifespan. Just stop the reset. This is a timing where, and also the power generation install capacity. Even though the nuclear can go very big power generation, but the install capacity in the scenario is uh, 400 gigawatt. But of course, in the meantime, we still need the success. It's a, we cannot avoid that. If we still want to use a coal fire power plant or natural gas fire power plant, this is our future. This figure show you the 1.5 degree target. We're still working on that because some part of that is not yet fully solved. For example, biomass power generation with, B, with a, a success. Uh, this is the one option we can go, one ca we can make the power generation sector to be negative emission by 2050. That means uh, we want to push all the sector to use electricity uh, because they were clean or negative emission. So this is a fundamental idea we, we, uh, we are doing with that. But in the 1.5 degree scenario in China, the nuclear power in our scenario is uh, 520 uh, gigawatt. Uh, later we'll talk about what happened for that one. In this scenario, of course, coal demand decreased a lot. Of course, it's so well impact uh, the uh, trade with Australia and also impact strongly with the domestic coal industry. But this is anyway, we want to make that and think about what the industry can use with that one. But finally, anyway, we also can do the near carbon neutral by 2050 by doing the above things. Uh, so this is uh, some signal we had to think about that with that one. And uh, the only policy that climate change right now is doing for the low carbon city always says a carbon neutral city. For example, Beijing, <laughs> they make their, their own decision. It's not for, for climate change. The, the decision in Beijing is they want to have for a look at uh, what happened in Sydney, because Beijing wants to be, be one of the Sydney, Melbourne, Vancouver, and Vienna, which is the top uh, uh, best city for liberal city in the last five years. Actually, Sydney get, got twice last year. Again, Sydney is the best city in the, in the world. So this figure show you how us, uh, how for China to design the low carbon city, what's the target. This, uh, our idea is uh, based on the CO2 emission per capita. This is what uh, Beijing is doing now. They want to compare with the CO2 emission per capita in Sydney. But which year Beijing can catch up with that one? Then they can announce, okay, we are one of the best city in China in, for the liberal city. So this is a design for Beijing. We finished the study for them. Actually, this is asked by the Beijing <coughs> government, even though officially not yet announced to the pub public, but internally we already have a lot of discussion. So by 2050, whether Beijing can be one of the uh, how say carbon neutral city uh, together with Sydney and Melbourne. And uh, they also designed their, their power generation system. Actually, Beijing also designed one nuclear power plant, but not in the boundary of Beijing. It's nearby, 150 kilometers away from Beijing. <coughs> so they designed the super high voltage transmission line from the nuclear power plant to Beijing. So this is another installed capacity. Uh, but some good stories that China is doing right now for what happening uh, toward the, to the, how say, uh, the low carbon or carbon neutral city. This show you the subway system. Even today, uh, in Beijing, we have 20 lines, uh, maybe not, uh, sorry, it's uh, because last month we finished two of them. So we, now they will have 18 subway lines under construction. Uh, so by 2030, the total subway line will be uh, uh, 1,300 kilometers in Beijing. So this figure show you by 2018, nearly 65% uh, of uh, globally uh, subway under construction is in China. So we are moving very fast. We tell people subway well, uh, is a very good uh, uh, transport or low carbon transport system. Uh, in China. But things is, uh, if we can do a good job for uh, CO2 mitigation, in the meantime, we also can enjoy a lot for air quality improvement. Because air quality, now that if you go to Beijing, you can feel much better than five years ago for the air quality. Uh, actually, I like it very much because uh, in uh, around 1998, actually, I want to move outside of Beijing. I don't want to live in Beijing. The air quality is so terrible. 
but today it's uh, getting much better. Uh, this figure shows you how to combine the CO2 emission mitigation together with air quality thing by energy transition for CO2, SO2, NOx, PM2.5. Actually, we also put mercury emission, black carbon, N2O, and the methane emission together. All the perfect thing. Uh, something technology changing is very fast. For example, this simple technology, shared bike. I also saw this in Sydney somewhere. Uh, it's a, my common life. Almost every day I use shared bike in Beijing somewhere. Uh, so this is uh, happening only within two or three years. It's getting to be very popular in China. I think in Beijing every day, 2.5 million people use shared bike every day. Uh, so this is uh, one life. And another one is uh, electric bike. Uh, in China, we already have uh, uh, 300 million electric bike. Uh, and also it's very good, not only for Beijing, but also last week we talked about Casamento's Nepal's uh, air pollution. So their air pollution money come from motorcycle. So can you easily use the electric bike to help them. Uh, electric car, we, this uh, roadmap we announced in 2010 together with uh, Victoria University in Melbourne. This is our common study, what we did. It's amazing because this study shows that uh, maybe by 2025, nearly 100% of car selling in China will be electric car. Nobody believed that. But by today, we saw that it's a feasible. Because uh, some amazing cars are still coming. This is the Nissan's e-power technology. They only use 2.7 uh, liters gasoline per 100 kilometers. It's an electric car, but they use a gasoline. And also battery, this Chinese battery, they can re run this bus for 800 kilometers with only one charge. And the electricity use is a 70 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. This bus make a hydrogen bus impossible. So because hydrogen bus has used a lot of electricity there, maybe three or four times higher than this one. And also this is the, the photo I took in the subway just uh, one month ago. You, you can see how cheap the electric car in, in Beijing there. So you can get with a very cheap uh, cost uh, with an electric car. Now Beijing have, is the largest city in the world to have an electric car. And the solar PV is trying to move very fast. The yellow one is the solar PV in, in China in 2012. In 2013, we have 12, nearly 13 gigo, uh, gigawatt newly installed capacity for uh, solar PV, but we're still in second. Uh, in 2014, we have 10 gigawatt. 2015, China is the largest one. 15 gigawatt of newly installed capacity for solar PV. 2016, 34 gigawatt. 2017, 52 gigawatt. 2018, we did 45 gigawatt because the policy changed. So this year we will do again 50 gigawatt newly installed capacity for solar PV. This is uh, what happening right now, what we are doing. This energy transition system go ahead with that, not only for solar PV, but also for wind. And also some picture can show you the top one, uh, top five largest uh, solar PV plant is in China. It's very huge. Uh, together with the hydropower, is amazing. In the meantime, last year, we also have very good progress for nuclear power. It's uh, amazingly progressed. We finished the uh, five or six of the third generation of a nuclear reactor, in, which is the first six in the world. And the solar PV cost is decreasing a lot, keep decreasing right now. In last 10 years, is, uh, the cost decreased 90%. So now, now it's only 10% of the cost in 10 years ago. And underuse technology make also perfect progress. Uh, so this is uh, one of the signal we are doing right now. Technology changing is a major focus in China. And also based on our study, we are removing all the carbon tax or carbon or emission trading. So we also can do two degree target or 1.5 degree target without any carbon pricing. This is our new study we are actually happening right now. So I'll finish here. Thank you very much.